floor is yours. Thank you for the uh, introduction and uh, thanks for being with me. And uh, yeah, so uh, it's supposed um, we are uh, supposed to have uh, two speaker at this uh, presentation, but my colleagues uh, he cannot make it, so uh, I will cover all the the, the content. Um, I'm going to talk about um, two actually two main topics. Uh, so the first one I will work together with you uh, on uh, telecom security in general because I think it might be uh, interested for you. Uh, to learn some, some at least the, the high level and the, the risk, the threats in terms of security uh, on the telecom uh, telecommunication networks. And the second uh, uh, part of the talk, uh, I'm going to dive uh, together with you in a, a deep, uh, deep dive into one use case, which is uh, the uh, SMS phishing, how we fight SMS phishing internally at post. Um, yeah, that's a few words about myself, but actually I was introduced before, so uh, I think uh, I can skip this part, but that's one small thing. Uh, as you know, we um, at Post Luxembourg we have the new uh, department in which we have kind of different competencies, and uh, I w I'm working on the cyber security, uh, cyber labs, so in which we foster uh, innovations and uh, develop new products, doing new experiment, new evaluation of new of security product, um, uh, all these uh, kind of interesting stuff that we will do uh, over there in the, in the uh, cyber labs in uh, Post Luxembourg. Yeah, so like I said, uh, we will cover the, uh, the, this topic, so telecom security threats and uh, the uh, SMS phishing and a little bit of spamming uh, detection, build everything from grab up. Um, do you know about telecom networks? Excellent, we have a few experts here, yeah. Uh, so usually the, the picture is much more dense and you know sophisticated and more complex than this. But here is really a really a bird eye views of uh, the telecom networks. Uh, so we have different operators around the world, and they are connecting. They have kind of uh, kind of own network, so they go through the internet, but usually they kind of the, 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 uh, in a secure manner. So they connect with one another, and they don't they don't open to the internet previously. And now, um, recently, um, there are a new kind of uh, players in, in, into the play. So we have virtual network operators. And these guys, they connect, they can leverage the existing network infrastructure of other operators, like Post. So we have Antenna, we have Core Network, but these guys, they just have data centers somewhere. And they're connected to the, um, the, 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 the infrastructure of other operators. And they, op they operate on top of it. And thanks to this guy, of course, internally we also have bad guys uh, within the telco, telco networks, right? So we are, we are not talking about the networks in Luxembourg, in Europe, but we also talk about the guy in Asia, the guy in, in Africa. So there are bad guys. And uh, especially we have this new player, so there are more and more, uh, let's say, threats, uh, telecom threats. Um, I think you have heard about this stuff. Uh, so uh, we have we have to deal with this um, uh, kind of attacks like daily. So we have spamming calls, or we have uh, SMS phishing, uh, SMS spamming. Uh, we also have a lot of telco fraud happening. Um, so just to highlight a few of the the, the main threat with you. So the first one is the which is we call it Wangri spamming calls. So this Wangiri from uh, Japanese means that's a drop call. So basically, some uh, fraudsters from somewhere, they make a massive number of uh, drop calls, right? So you can talk about 10 or 1,000 within a few minutes. And then our customer call back. So that's the point. Because sometimes they don't, the people just, they just don't care about who's calling them. They just say, okay, I missed this call. Might be important, I call back. And then if they call back, they are routed to premium numbers. So then the customer have to pay a lot. But think about it, one people pay one euros per minute, but if 10, 100 of people calling back, the hacker get 100 euros. And if it is 1,000, the number is getting bigger. So that is the first uh, tra the fraud. The second one, which is PBX hacking, I'm going to have a, a, kind of a, a more detail about this case, so I will skip this part. Uh, next one, which is subscription fraud. So somebody might fake their ID, go to go to the shop, and then uh, ask for a new SIM card, and then it's, uh, then they can use the SIM card to authenticate the other services. 
uh, spoofing also interesting because thanks to the uh, the virtual network operator, like I mentioned earlier, they can actually spoof any numbers. So um, it happens in Luxembourg that they spoof a uh, a number of some elderly people, and then suddenly many people are calling back, and they call to the real numbers. So then the the the, the lady she was like bombarded with so many calls and she complained. But um, in general, they use a spoofing call uh, to make advertisement to uh, make survey. So basically, they choose some random numbers and they spoof. They happen to spoof some 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 real numbers. Um, next up, so SMS phishing. Uh, again, I'm going to dive in, into this into detail, so I will skip this. Um, the next one is quite interesting. So here we talk about subscriber call. SMS and data interceptions, meaning that you send a, an SMS to somebody else and the SMS can be intercepted by the th a third uh, attackers. Or you call somebody else, you call your partner, your boss, etc. And the call might be intercepted. And it is happening. Uh, it's quite uh, straightforward thanks to the uh, vulnerabilities in the telecom network, especially on the, the SS7 like, uh, protocols. Um, you might be able to uh, trace the location of somebody's also. And of course, there's other, other kind of fraud. Um, yeah, so the first um, example, so I give you this example because I think it's quite interesting uh, from my point of view as well, because when we detect this and we visualize it, we say, yeah, it's quite interesting. Um, so do you, do you know what a PBX is? So a Company and organization, so you have the kind of the center uh, switching board, uh, center uh, telephone system. It's route the phone internally, and when you go, when you call outside, they share some lines. Yeah. And, um, so of course, before we use, we have this beautiful lady, you know, doing some kind of connecting from A to B. And, uh, in the past like 10 years, we have this system, so telephone system in the border of the, the company. And now we have this, it's very interesting as well, so, yeah, yes, on the cloud. So what happens when these uh, PBX got hacked? Of course, this cannot be hacked, I don't know. Um, but this, when it got hacked, the attacker can actually generate a massive number of calls, forms or numbers, to a numbers, to, to a list of numbers, to a huge number of lists of uh, numbers co uh, owned by hackers. Right, and then if you are owner of this PBX, you will have to pay a lot of money. So, I'm going to show you in a graphical way, so you can really perceive it. So here, um, you can see one dot is one numbers, and most of these gray dots are owned by hackers. Okay, you can imagine, you can see they are all over the world, and many in Africa in this case. Um, and yes, so this is what we observe. Uh, yes, so let's explain, and I will explain it later on. We don't have a sound, so sorry. <laughs> it's kind of a muted uh, video. Uh, but you can see here, we have all of these uh, colored dots, uh, those uh, that are extension of one PBX. So here we have 19 extension. And then this attacker that uses uh, um, phone number to call uh, all these uh, gray numbers owned by them. And uh, so our system, we can detect them quite quickly. So we detect and we block them. So that's why we have this kind of trading game. So let me play it back. You can see. So this guy making a massive number of calls to many destinations. We block them, stop. Next one. Okay, we detect stop, detect, block, stop. So this is automated, right? So we, we detect the guy, we block them, but it, like always we run up behind him, the guys. Yeah. So that, it was the first work that we, uh, we did like, uh, more than two years ago. When I, it was quite impressive at the beginning because we see that and we show this visualization to our management and they say, yeah, it's, we see some, some kind of good impact. So then they sponsor us to do more other stuff. Um, yeah. So what we learned from this kind of observation and from the experience so far is that the froster and cyber criminal in general, they are smart people and they are very well organized. They are globally organized and they're evolving. 
And uh, we are running behind them. I really, we are running behind them because we are talking about B side, right? So defense side. So we are running behind them. We need to be fast and precise. I will explain why. Um, so what we uh, we have at post, so we uh, combine these three, let's say, uh, competencies together. So the first one is big data analytics, being able to ingest a huge amount of data. So we are talking about a, a few 300, uh, more than 300 gigabytes per day currently, and we are expanding. Uh, we need to use machine learning uh, capability to be able to, you know, analyze such amount, such a huge amount of data. And then we have also some development DevOps in place to automate the, uh, the mitigation actions. Because otherwise we cannot, you know, handle quickly and can, can, can cope with the, the, uh, for example, the, the night shift or during the weekend. Because usually, first, uh, they do, they, they start the attack when we are not there. Um, sorry, so last part, so fast is quite, you, it's kind of obvious, right? So we try to catch the guy as fast as possible. But to be, the, the next point I think I would like to emphasize is that you need to be precise. Because if we detect the wrong guy, then we block the wrong buttons, uh, the wrong uh, numbers. Then the, the customer will be affected, right? And also, if you are not precise, you will produce a lot of false positives. And then, you know, there will be no more people will be involved. They have to deal with those false positives, and at some point they will say, okay, I'm fed up. So, so it's quite important to be fast and precise. Um, any questions so far? Good. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, so this is the main, actually the main topic of today's talk. Uh, we'll talk about SMS phishing and spam using machine learning. So I don't know if it's, uh, you will be interested in that. Uh, the, the goal, the, our objective is to really to be able to catch the bad guy in real time. So really real time. So we are talking about a, really a latency of less than a, a let's say half a, half a minute. So that's the goal. Um, SMS phishing, you know it, so sender affects, so sender, uh, usually they pretend to be a bank or some known brand or a commercial website or a big company. They send very short but attractive, very interesting SMS, like, please, do you have an update uh, on your account, uh, you receive a, uh, let's say, a, a gift from our whatsoever, and please click on this link, right? And uh, of course, they contain malicious links. Yeah, and it happens in Luxembourg many times. They send to uh, banks customers, customers of banks, and then when they follow the link, they will be forwarded to this page. You know what it is, right? Uh, everyone knows this. Yeah, so it's Luxtrust, the uh, identity provider in Luxembourg for authentication. So once you authenticate. The attacker, they have the valid, you know, token or section ID and they, they can do whatever with your bank account. Um, yes, but actually it's quite challenging, uh, in terms of when we deal with these problems. So the, f uh, first challenge is that we need to be scalable. And, uh, there's something, actually at some point people say SMS is dead because nobody is using SMS. They use social networking whatsoever. But we are observing that SMS actually is coming back. Uh, because of the cheap tariffs, so now sending SMS is much cheaper than previously, and uh, it is easier because, for example, like I mentioned at the beginning, we have uh, NVN, uh, NVNO, so basically virtual network uh, operators. That's data center, they provide service on a website, you pay a few euros, you can send a few hundred of emails, uh, of SMS, uh, regardless of the contents. It's very easy. Um, yeah, and actually many banks, many uh, companies, they are using SMS for the uh, multi-factor authentication. So um, one of the challenges that we have to face with is the, previously there's some kind of SMS uh, firewalls, and they work based on rules, and they don't work anymore because sender content and UIL can change very, very quickly. So there's no way you can catch a guy. You can block, for example, bank number A, but the next time, if you block really on the sender, you might block the wrong guy. You might block the actual bank sending the SMS. If you block the content, 
The next day, the guy will change the content of the SMS, and again, you might block the content, they're the wrong guy. Yeah, the second uh, uh, challenge we have to face is effectiveness. So again, we need to be precise. So it's very important to catch the right guy fast. Um, we have to deal with multiple languages at the same time. This is very interesting in Luxembourg, because in other countries, you might have a kind of the dominant language. For example, in French, in France, people speak French mainly, 99%, I would say. Uh, texting in, in, in French. Uh, in SMA, in, in the UK, for example, they would text in, in, in English, of course. But in Luxembourg, we don't observe really a, major, a majority of the, of the language. So we need to support multiple languages right from the start. So we cannot say, okay, let's stick with France, French, and then we move on now. Try to cover as much as we can at the beginning. Um, last but not least, which is privacy. Uh, so we have to be fully automated because it, uh, you, know, you cannot first, you are, we are not capable to analyze the content. And second of all, it is not allowed. So it must be done by machine. So every, every, everything must be automated. So, uh, like I mentioned, so machine learning comes to, uh, in, into the play. Uh, so we resort to machine learning, so we, we are able to ingest and decode all the data in real time. And the next thing is to use machine learning to detect uh, uh, the bad guys, so bad SMSs. Uh, actually, just to decompose the problem a little bit, we are dealing with three problems at the same time. So the first one, we need to detect the right language, right? So given a text, a piece of text, you have to know, is this in English, is this in French? Uh, let's say voyage or whatever. So different languages. Um, we have to classify the content of the SMS, right? So having the the, um, the the SMS, we have to classify them using the uh, natural. Um, in machine learning, we have a field which is called natural language processing. So we use all the advances in in NLP, natural language processing, to classify text from good tech, or we call it harm, which is not harmful text, and spam. And then um, <clears throat> the last one, we have a piece of URL, which of course we can decompose all the information, extract all the information from the URLs, and then we have to classify URL from good URLs, uh, or legitimate URL, to bad ones. So I'm going to dive specifically on the last uh, topic, which is URL classification. So it, so given one URL, uh, usually I'm as a data scientist, we will I have to ask myself like what characterize a bad SMS, a bad uh, URL, right? So it turns out that after analysis, and of course we uh, this is not we are not the first one to deal with this uh, kind of uh, phishing problems. But uh, in, on the internet, people deal with phishing, uh, for example, on emails. So uh, they have, let's say, better machine. Um, they can actually analyze longer text. So, uh, and we are, um, we are actually, it's something I, I mentioned, I forgot to mention earlier, is that um, for the SMS phishing detection, we cannot actually in, uh, analyze the content of the targeted web page. Because, for example, if, you, if we activate the URLs, we might invalidate the, 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 the right URL of the, uh, of the senders. For example, you want to reset the password, and the system sends you a link. And it is only valid only one time. So it, when you, once you open the link, it is invalidated, invalidated. So we cannot analyze the content of the web page. That's also one challenge. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. So, um, looking back at the URLs, so we have to analyze the URLs, and uh, I mean, from a high-level point of view, we need to, you know, separate these bad guys from the good guys. And then, um, if we look really deep into the URLs, actually, we can extract a lot of uh, information. So, in machine learning, we call it like feature engineering. So, basically, you cook the URL in multiple ways. Just to see what is the 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 uh, the, the uh, 
kind of the, the um, how do I say, the characteristics of the bad URLs. So here, w given one URL, we analyze them. So is the top level domain known or unknown? Uh, the domains belong to a known uh, organization or brand, thing like that. Uh, do we have kind of repetitiveness uh, of the characters? So for example, sometimes uh, the um, the um, attacker they just re uh, replicate some some characters. For example, Google instead of having two O's, they put three O's, right? Or instead of uh, O O, they have O C. So then they have something like uh, something is to some word which is not meaningful. Uh, we have to analyze some randomness in the uh, in the words in the URLs. So for example, here we might have something. Uh, not so meaningful, for example, uh, yeah, owns, uh, yeah, or info with a 2 -0, for example, thing like that. <clears throat> um, we also, um, in the EOL used by attackers, they sometimes they use, uh, cannot, they use uh, the, the, uh, um, all the digits, so instead of uh, alpha numeric, um, alpha, um, um, so A, B, A, B, C, uh, the, the uh, letters, they use digits, so for example, 0, 1, 2, 3. They use this more often than, than, than usual. And also special characters, so they use special characters in the URLs. So, etc. So we have, in total, we have more than 30 uh, we call features. Uh, those features can characterize URLs. And yes, so in terms of machine learning, we need to provide the machine with some kind of data for training. So um, thanks to some uh, open sources, so we have OpenFish and FishTang where people report the uh, phishing URLs. So from here we can really, uh, let's say, download and retrieve a lot of URLs, uh, bad URLs. So we use that as some as one one set of the training, uh, one half of the training data set. And the second half, we need the good URLs. So with this, we can really rely on search engines. So we can, let's say, do some random queries on search engine, and they return a list of URLs. It's quite quite straightforward. Something that I am actually very surprised when I learned the first time is about the error rate on training data. Um, so that's to explain to you a little bit. So here we can see the the training iteration. So the more you train, the better you learn. Um, and then says here the error rate. So like how many times I classify wrong URLs. Good become bad, bad become good. So that is wrong URLs. And we can see at the best error rate only 1%, 1.5% maximum. So meaning that we can have some accuracy of let's say 98.5. So it's quite impressive at the beginning. <clears throat> of course, if you know more about machine learning, that could kind of a problem as well, but I can, I will skip that. If you are interested, we can discuss later. Um, yeah, and then actually we have this, uh, um, uh, the, the, the whole system for SMS phishing detection in real, in production since uh, a few months. Um, yeah, seen actually in April this year. And we detect, uh, Spam, but actually there is kind of a limited spam uh, because we detect only spam, but with the URLs uh, within inside the text, we can detect spam campaigns like every day, daily we can detect spam campaign campaigns. But currently we don't do, take any action, not yet. Um, but of course, when if we have customer complaining, then we can have the choice and we can take some actions. But for the uh, phishing. We detect uh, phishing, like uh, targeting banks, targeting retailers, like once per week. So uh, this is kind of often, at the beginning before, we, we don't see that. So we, we assume maybe we don't know, or we, we assume that nothing happened. But actually, uh, it's kind of interesting to learn that they, they, they have this kind of phishing campaign like once per week. At least uh, here, again, we, are, we have visibility only on, on our network, so on post network. So I don't know about the, the other networks. Maybe they suffer the same thing or more or less, I don't know. <clears throat> um, so we have this system in production and what you see here is the some uh, interface. Uh, we also using Splunk as the presentation layers. 
Of course, we have all the uh, machine and all the, the, the processing of data, the real-time, uh, let's say, treatment of data. We, we use Kafka for that, if you are interested. Um, and then we use uh, machine learning to detect everything. Only we send alerts to Splunk for visualization and, and the presentation. And here we will we can analyze the uh, the, the detected uh, phishing attack. Um, we see the content, we see the number of targets, etc. And uh, yes, we can also see a deep and a deep dive into the uh, SMS phishing. So here, for example, you can see the language, the how many recipients, uh, the probability of being a fish. Uh, a fi a, a phishing SMS, for example, here we have it's like 91 percent, um, etc. So we have all these kind of uh, details using Splunk. Yes. So in summary, uh, I have presented uh, some, as I just highlighted, some some threats in, uh, on on telecom networks. Oh, like you already have seen, we have actually we are facing quite a lot of uh, threats that sometimes we we don't know. Uh, so one of them being SMS phishing, um, and uh, in-house, uh, of course, we are kind of lucky because at, some sense, at the same time we have kind of different competence. So we have a team of good competence of different people, and then we build everything from ground up, from decoding of the uh, traffic to you know processing data, and then detecting, uh, running machine learning to detect attacks and presentation. So all those competence together in one team. And then we can we have built this uh, system and it is up and running. It's kind of uh, something that we will really like to share with you. Thank you. Thank you. So, any question? Ah, <laughs> I shouldn't have gotten this like. <laughs> uh, thank you for the presentation. Super interesting. Uh, I have few questions, so yeah. I'm going to pick the most relevant ones, and then we can discuss the last ones outside. <laughs> you show a nice graph of uh, tracking the BBX scammers or attackers and how you block them very fast. Uh, did you use like different machine learning models for doing that tracking and blocking as well? Because you didn't get into that part. No, but, but that also we also use machine learning. Okay. But for that, uh, uh, we have kind of in-house data. So we also have known code uh, before, and then the normal traffic that we can capture everything like that. Mm. And then for that particular machine learning model, uh, we use, uh, so we can uh, look at the core traffic, and you will see from one coding guy, when one uh, guy who's coding, how many times you call a uh, uh, time window, Mm. Uh, how long you call, how much money do you spend on those calls, who are you calling, to which uh, country you are going. So, uh, again, it's kind of a huge uh, a number mm. of features. And then, using that, we can also detect the uh, bad guy. Yeah. yeah, super cool. Uh, you mentioned that you used the data from Fish Tank and Open Fish. Yep. Uh, to train the models that you are using for this system. Uh, do you contribute back? output to those uh, rebels because as you mentioned it's a very serious threat and it just keeps going on every day there are new phishing URLs and new phishing attempts and mm -hmm. uh, people who enjoy doing this for various reasons uh, so you have a very it looks really nice and I think it works from what you presented so yep. It could be very helpful no, if works. you are contributing <laughs> the data back. So are you doing no, that? No, indeed, actually. Um, uh, so we contribute back. So, um, like, uh, you know, at Post, we have one CSOS tool, uh, team. And also we have the, the uh, SOC teams. So those teams, uh, they will handle all the, uh, let's say, incidents. Mm -hmm. And then from the incident, as, as long as we use, uh, we, we observe any bad URLs, we contribute back to Fishtown at the moment. But like I mentioned at some point, uh, we cannot activate the URLs yeah. if it is not confirmed. So only when we receive any, let's say, complaint from the banks or from the retailer saying that, hey, we are suffering this kind of massive uh, SMS phishing, only then we can, let's say, list all the URL and then we submit to uh, actually circle, uh, circle they have um, URL abuse yeah. and then uh, um, fish tank. Yeah. 
Great. One last question. I'm super sorry for hogging the mic. Uh, fish URLs, IBs, BBX, scammer locations, all of those are super nice IOCs that could be helpful for other incident responders. Do you use MISP in any function or any way to like store those kind of things and maybe share them either internally or with other ISBs around uh, the region? Um, and that's a very interesting question. It's an, and do you know that we have two instances of MIS, MISP? So one is for MISP for IT. So we share the, the all the stuff yeah, related to IT uh, world. And the second instance of MIPS is uh, shared by all telco provider. So the second instance of MIPS uh, is uh, shared by uh, is, is sponsored by GSMA, uh, one kind of telecom uh, association. And there we share the uh, kind of all the fraud that we detect, all the bad numbers. Uh, all the fraud, all the number owned by hackers, by attackers, and then also this uh, information. Hey, thank you for the presentation. Uh, you skipped really fast about the failure rate of your machine learning. Uh, so, yeah, okay. yeah, how do you cope with uh, with the failure? Actually, uh, do you accept to frustrate customer to not having the SMS delivered? How do you do this? Um, so this particular case, we don't take any action yet. So we only detect, and then we st we store all the alerts uh, in a kind of the, in its plan. And then only when the customer, for example, banks, they call us, and then we can take actions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in the next time, you 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 consider doing this proactively and blocking threats directly or yeah. not? Yeah. So that's the next step. Uh, so the next step, we kind of trying to get the banks and retailer on board. So if we get their authorization, then we will take actions. And as you know, the telco provider, we have some something which is called SMS uh, firewalls. We can really uh, put some rules over there to block the. Uh, yeah. So thank you for the great talk. Um, my question is a bit related to the last one. Uh, before differentiation. So in the first slides you mentioned that it would be possible, for example, to spoof numbers into the system and spoof SMS. So um, how realistic would you see a threat when someone spoofs the number of someone and um, intentionally sends malicious links so the person gets locked out from the system? So he cannot uh, send any calls or send any SMS anymore. Um. So you are saying that if we, for example, block the bad guy, but the effect will be the the right guy, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, actually, apart from this information, like from the sender, we have more information because we can have like how what kind of the routing, what is the information? So the the sender from which let's say let's say network element or from from which network uh, let's say path uh, he. Did he send the the the, uh, the SMS? Okay, so if yeah. I, for example, access uh, SS7 network from a provider in Africa, yeah, and the real person would be located in Luxembourg, so this would be also taken into consideration from from that. That's direction. correct. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks for your question. Any other question? Uh, hello. Firstly, I would like to thank you for the well-presented materials. Uh, it was creative. My question is related. Uh, actually, there are two questions. Uh, and I think that uh, they are somehow related. Uh, in the first of your presentations, you mentioned one word that is with Japanese uh, root. Uh, I'm not sure for the pronunciation of the, this word. Uh, we 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 uh, drop out. It means you can um, uh, scroll back uh, because I'm not sure how was the word. Uh, this means actually drop uh, drop out uh, your calls. Uh, are, are yes. You, are you Japanese? Uh, no, you no. Speak I'm, Japanese? Fr I'm, I'm from <laughs> Bulgaria actually. Uh, Excellent. Okay. I don't know how how <laughs> yeah. I sound, but uh, it's just interesting for me uh, from where this uh, root of the, the, this word. Because uh, uh, I, you mean uh, the, the, uh, the one first, uh, Yes, the first one. So uh, yeah, w I don't know who picked this word, but basically, <laughs> so it means in Japanese like drop calls. So mm -hmm. you call and you drop. How is exactly pronunciation? Wangri. 
Wang Giri. I'm not I'm not Japanese by the way, so don't trust me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Wang Giri. Uh, maybe we have Japanese in the room, no? No. So and maybe my second question will be much more interesting yeah. uh, because it's something uh, that I am observing on my phone and I'm not sure and just would like to consult. I received some types of drop calls, but yeah. this was actually from my known co contacts. For example, my mother, my my brother or something like that, that are um, that are in my phone. Is it possible actually this is to be some premium uh, number that is actually some, something else, but uh, to, um, this, uh, to hide somehow, to distinguish and to represent like uh, somebody that you know, is it possible? It, it, usually not, because uh, Zophone is smart enough, so when it receives any call, it will check the uh, contact list. Mm -hmm. So actually it shows a local contact list, so not anything who's from the, from the network providers. So it's just pressing something missed by... Um, uh, actually, in the end, I'm always um, out in authenticate. I'm always con contact back and uh, ask people, is, is, uh, is this is uh, some type of error or what this was? And actually, uh, this was actual call, so it's okay. Yeah, of course, yeah. And uh, here people do not um, pick up uh, randomly numbers, of course. You... I uh, have to verify to to be sure, so that's okay. Oh, thank you. Okay, I have a <laughs> sorry. I, I have one question. Uh, uh, there are, of course, limits to your uh, uh, analytic systems because, uh, for example, I can show you maybe afterwards. I have an SMS. Uh, in Bulgaria, you know, uh, we use uh, Cyrillic letters. So I have here an example of uh, um, spam, SMS spam, yes, both of us, we received the spam SMS, which is written, no, they, they don't use Cyrillic, they use Latin alphabet to represent the Cyrillic, so you can't possibly have uh, any chance of analyzing this language because this language does not exist. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I will. I will show you the example, no, and it's and, it's and really bad. No, actually, you highlight a very interesting point, and uh, <laughs> I would love to show you something like this. Uh, I started to show you because I cropped the picture. But actually, we have something like on this side we say feedback. And when, when we have the feedback loop in which uh, the user can say this is uh, post positive or this is not post positive. And also, the user can also upload some kind of their own data. So, for example, you send me a list of SMS, I can collect it for a while and then I upload to the system and it will retrain itself. So, in this way, we improve over time. And one way, maybe one day we can detect those. Uh, yeah, a good example. Thanks. Any other question? Does your work will be in public space? Uh, I mean, uh, do you share your findings with other telco company, or it will be only internal for your own business needs? Actually, we are kind of in the contact with other telco provider because they are really interested on the, in this. And uh, we kind of packing a, a solution and we uh, we sell to them, yeah. So uh, not only so this is one single module, but uh, like I, I, sh I mentioned, we have really a lot of threads, and then the, the tool that we have uh, it detects really a lot of of them, yeah. Okay, so uh, I do have one question. Uh, earlier, you said that you don't inspect the content of the URL, right? Uh, so. How do you deal with uh, URL shorteners? The uh, shortener? Yeah. Um, that's uh, quite tricky, so that's why we combine uh, many things together. So not only the URL, but we consider also the content, the language, and then on top of that we also, I think that's also actually a good observation, so we also consider the senders and how many recipients they, do they send and how similar the recipient are because usually the first uh, they use some kind of um, they do enumeration of the, uh, the recipients so they don't care yeah. so then we we observe a lot of similarity between the, uh, amongst the recipients so we take all of them into account 
And the uh, uh, shorten URL is quite a good example because most of them they use random word. So by default, this um, uh, kind of machine learning model detects all those uh, URLs. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this also means that if I send uh, some phishing to, let's say, a restricted number of persons, there is likely no chance that this system detects it, right? If you send, but yeah, if, if I if just if send uh, yeah. a URL shortener, uh, shortened, have, yeah. uh, I don't know, to yeah, 20 people or 30 people. Attack. Yeah, if you have targeted attacks, yes, that's a good point. Okay. Then uh, we, we can say those are, like, let's say, not so impactful. Yeah. For this, for the for the public, yeah. Okay. And uh, m my last question, uh, but uh, I guess it's uh, it's it's clear just to have a, uh, an idea. It's um, I mean your uh, system uh, in the first hand always delivered the SMS to the person, right? And then it's after some people already received the the phishing that you can actually uh, block the number or do your, uh, let's say, your re reaction to this. Currently, uh, we do, we wait even longer. So, uh, because we, if we work with the, let's say, the, the, um, the banks or the retailers, so if we have their authorization, hmm. then we can take some action. Otherwise, we wait for them or we proactively inform them uh, by email or by some channel that we have, and then we we wait for their kind of confirmation or actions, and okay. then we take action. Yeah. And uh, sorry, I'm uh, uh, taking, uh, I, I'm asking a lot of questions. Uh, last one is, uh, okay, it also means that you are, let's say, aggregating the SMSs sent on a time uh, window. Yeah. So, also, if I, I don't know, somehow identify that your time window is, I don't know, 30 seconds. If I send one SMS every 30 seconds, you go through as well. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, I thought, to be fair, I thought about it. And then uh, we can actually have multiple models running uh, at yeah. the same time. So yeah, one right. can be very fast, yeah. but dealing with the kind of noisy guys. Yeah. And the other one can be yeah. slower, but then we can deal with the slower one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. I have uh, one more question. Um, regarding when you detect messages, um, the, you see a huge spam cam campaign because you mentioned the public. So what we would do at our company is we would inform our um, employees that there's currently a spamming campaign going on and we yeah. would inform them how it would look like. So would you also mind to replace the spam message with a message from the provider maybe, which will um, send maybe a warning message to customers that there is currently a spamming campaign and they got targeted by this campaign? So usually what we do currently uh, for those a customer that that we don't have kind of kind of uh, agreement then we contact the uh, security officer or some contacting point in the security teams and notify them about the incidents and but of course in the in, the, in that email we don't mention anything any details at all only when they say that okay it's interesting it is uh, relevant for us then we take action and then we can share more information mm, okay yeah so I think it's time for the uh, the last talk. So uh, thank you, Ku, for your presentation.